Hey, what's going on, everybody? Jamie McDonald here with Mike Baining on a crazy Monday night episode of Mirrorless Minutes, and this is the Pen F edition of the show. Totally stoked to be doing this. Uh, yep. I know Mike has been sitting on this thing forever. <laughs> Finally, the embargo lifts. He can talk about it and talk about it. He's been doing, and tonight he'll actually be able to to show it off, which is yeah, which is awesome. It, oh. oh. Wrong one. Hold yeah. on. That's Mike, Mike, goes, one. <laughs> Mike needs to get back to the future from the past. All right. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. All right. That, but I would love to have a cap like that. You know, you got to come up with a cap like like that. That is a cool. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, Mike. You just get the adapter to put that Pen F lens on the new Pen F, and there you go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there you go. Then you got it, right? That's, a, that's a roundabout way. That's the uh, merging of past and present. Right, right, exactly. Cool. Um, so, yeah. So, okay, yeah. I'm I'm just gonna jump in and babble because mm -hmm. that's what I like to do, I like to run my mouth. So, um, first <laughs> off, your opinion is gonna be extremely biased, but that's okay because I trust it 100. Yeah. percent uh, What have you thought so far? Well, it's uh, it's I can tell you there'll probably be a ne never be another camera I shoot in the street, but this one right here. Let's start that way. <laughs> yep. I, I won't I won't shoot any other ones. Nothing against my own D's because my EM10 was was my number one used camera. That was my street camera, uh, 17 millimeter. You know, uh, 1.8 lens. Of course, will stay stay with it uh, on the Pen F. But it's just um, there's so much you can do. It's 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 hard to uh, you know put it into words right off the bat because it just feels so much different than a than an OMD to me. Right. Um, you know, definitely. You know, I just came back from uh, a vacation where I was using the EM1 and the Pen F are the only two I brought with me because I had some chances to do street shooting and some landscape shooting, and um, I even took. To, to ratchet up a, a notch, I took and threw the 40 to 150 on the pen because I wanted to try some of this, what we're going to talk about tonight, something we haven't heard a lot about, and that's 20 frames per second. Yes. And I was trying to shoot some deer running through the forest. These little key, I know you know what I'm talking about, the little yeah. key deer. Key deer, the ones yeah. that are like the size of bigger dogs. Right. Out in uh, <laughs> Key West there, or near Key West. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so in and it works. I would say I would say this about the pen with the forty to one fifty, and of course I don't have the three hundred to try it. Um, I, I do think it's probably not balanced properly. It, maybe with the grip, it would feel better because right now I don't have a grip right. on it. Because when you put that big lens on, it is a, a little awkward. <laughs> right. You really got to hold. You you really got to hold it a lot more than you do the EM one. Because with that EM1, you got that large grip on the side. Yeah, it's. Um, I've seen a couple of people mention, you know, well, can you imagine hanging the 40 to 150 or 300 millimeter off the front of that camera? And, and I think I chimed in on one of their comments and said, think about it this way. Think of it as hanging that camera off the back of that lens. So because right. <laughs> I've done that. I shot uh, the 90 yeah. to 250 f2.8 four-thirds lens, which is like this six-pound, gigantic, oh, wow. humongous yeah. And I put um I put the EP5 on it and I put um the EM10 on it and the Olympus Air on it and basically right. you're kind of just holding the lens and just touching the back of the camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's that's sort of, you know, I mean it's a little bit that way the 4150 it it still felt fine. Um right. but I mean I couldn't imagine holding like for a whole basketball game or no. And plus the the auto the auto focus with with that EM one when you got the phase detect going it's it's a whole it's a whole different ball game. So, but uh, to to try some of the things on this camera though it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, you know, because, and something to mention too. I don't know if I've seen mm -hmm. it mentioned a whole lot out there yet. Is that um, the uh, the Pen F is the flagship of the Pen family, mm -hmm. so it will work with the uh, the dual X, the dual image stabilization, utilizing both the lens image stabilization in the three hundred millimeter f four right. and in the body. They work in conjunction like it would on the EM one. So, just yeah. for those who weren't sure about that, yeah, exactly. It's going to have that same uh, that same situation, and, and I know everybody talks about it has uh, you know the five axis stabilization, but it has the same five axis that's in the EM5 Mark II. Yes, which, which is, is better up than all bit. the others. Yes, it's definitely. <laughs> so you got to remember, 
Um, you know, and there, there's one thing I could talk about right there, shooting from the hip with this thing um, is so much better than the EM-10. And not that that one was rough. Actually, the new one was nice because it came with five, you know, the Mark II EM-10. Right. Um, but now with this, shooting from the hip, um, you just, because you're always getting bounced around when you're shooting from the hip on the street. You don't know which way you're going sometimes. And, but just, just the wobbling um, and still picking up sharp shots. I've got a, I've got a couple that will go over tonight that uh, I'll tell you were for, uh, direct from the hip with this thing and it would have been blurred on something else. And, uh, and you know, and then, again, the autofocus is extremely fast, but the, the actual response time of that shutter button is sick. <laughs> and then I've gone ahead and, and I've taken the, the Jamie McDonald cue, and I've got these, <clears throat> what is it called here? It's a that, soft shutter release button. Yeah, it's Vonodo. I, well, I'll have to put a link or something. You got the link. You put the link in. Yeah, there's a million brands of them. Yeah, but. it's good. But I put the red one on. I've got a black one when I want to go stealth. I've got a silver one, and it came in three. And I think it was what? What was it? it was like eight bucks. bucks. Yeah, I know. Nothing. When I saw the camera at your house before yeah. we flew out to New yeah. York, uh, as soon as I think I ordered it when we were in Pennsylvania, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've, had, I've been know. sitting on mine since November. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'll tell you what, with that new button on, I now I'm really even liking it. Now talk about taking something fast and, and making it faster. Yeah, very uh, responsive that way. You know, and then so, so since we're talking about that, let's let's bring this up, the camera up to the screen here. And, and again, we're trying, we're not hooked in, so it can't be perfect, but I've got to be able to show you. All right, so there's there's Pen F, and if you can see what I've got attached is the plunger that attaches just like an old film camera. I picked it up, and I see if I can focus on you here. I don't know if you can hear it going. <laughs> yeah, the, the ten frames a second, but uh, yeah, that is uh, that. You know, I got some good shots of you there. <laughs> That's like the uh, the pre beta of OI Share remote right. control, right? There you go. Actually, physical tether. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Again, uh, something that uh, you know, at first I thought, why am I going to get this? And then you know, for eleven dollars, and I actually, I think I am going to use it for um, for live composites. Yeah. Sure. I think I think I will, especially on uh, bridges and things like that when the cars are going past you, mm -hmm. um, and you're trying to get a little bit more stable, you know, right. before you take the shot, instead of uh, your your, uh, you know, holding onto it or pushing it. So it's worth a little uh, a little fun thing to have added on, and people yeah. look and go, "What the heck are you doing <laughs> with the plunger?" <laughs> That will definitely uh, make people wonder if you're shooting digital or not, especially if right. you flip the uh, the display oh, in I, so you can't absolutely. see it. Absolutely. It'll really throw them for a loop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, I thought, um, you know, tonight there's been a lot written about the camera, and you can I think you can find it anywhere if you wanted to <laughs> right now. Um, actually, it was trending. We talked about that on, on Facebook. Yeah. And that first uh, day or two of announcements actually was trending on Facebook uh uh, you know, at least on our updates there, which was amazing. But uh, maybe some of the things that haven't been talked about. That's a good uh, idea. Would You know, it's some of the stuff where, you know, if Jamie had one in his hand, I know he'd be going crazy too, trying to figure all this out. And sometimes it's tough for me to get in and do all that if I was trying to be on vacation at the same time <laughs> instead of playing with the camera. But, um, excuse me, the one of the things is this 20 – frames per second I, and i've only heard it mentioned a couple of times by some people and uh i'm not even sure if anybody's really gone into it no but i, don't I tried think so. it on vacation and I'm looking here right now so bear with me it's called h h plus with a heart yeah so it's so it's a silent shutter 20 frames a second um and it, and it just flipping flies i mean yeah. it's, it's hard to even explain when when you hold it up and it's just you know you hold it down for one second and you don't even know it's taking all those all those shots yeah of course so you release it and then you realize that you have 40 shots on your you know in your viewfinder yeah so on the mechanical shutter it's 10 frames per second right right and when it's on the electronic shutter which is silent uh, right. 20 frames per second and you're right i don't think hardly anybody's mentioned it i know during the uh the product briefing on it 
that was one of the things that stood out to me immediately. It was 20 frames per second. And then when everybody started talking about the camera, I thought, why is nobody mentioning 20 frames <laughs> per second? 20 frames per second. Right. And, and so I was, what I tried to do is we had, a, it was out by the ocean there um, on the Atlantic and the, you know, the ocean crashing up on the rocks. So I was trying to capture, capture that. I may not have the best composed picture, but it was more about catching the, the water, you know, droplets in the air. Right. And um, it's shooting at 16 thousandth of a second <laughs> at 20 frames a second. Yeah. It's kind of ridiculous. I mean, it was actually a little odd because I feel, I felt like I was shooting a, uh, 300 shot time lapse in about four seconds <laughs> when I went into and I started to load these images into uh, into uh, Lightroom. I went, how many shots did I take of this crazy thing? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I guess that uh, you know uh, all these people are always saying, oh, we can pull the, the screens from the 4K video or whatever on some other competitors that actually right. does it just holding it down. <laughs> right, but it's uh, significantly less. Uh, yeah. in image size than it would be oh. doing it this way. So this way you're getting 20 megapixel oh, full getting, size yeah. images, uh, yeah. whereas the Top competitor the would be a what? Like, a, eight. is it eight megapixel eight. shot? Megapixel shot. So, yeah, so it's something I'm definitely going to dig into more. Um, I haven't dug into yet, and I want to maybe uh, sometime this week, the, the 50 megapixel high res shot. Yeah. Uh, We've taken a couple here and there. I want to I want to get some good ideas of what kind of pictures people might want to see. So if you're watching, got some ideas, leave them in the notes. Maybe I can set up some things to to take that, um, you know, and see get some comparisons out there while I have it with me. Um, so that that would be uh, that would be good. I will th I'll throw this out there and I throw it with I'll throw it out there with a grain of salt. I know I know no one has these yet, but when you do get them. If Lightroom hasn't made a raw converter or some other, I don't know why, and I'm still exploring it, but I'm going to mention it. Okay, because <laughs> Reba uh, Basket, one of the followers of Mirrorless Minutes, was, you know, out of Chicago, good friend. Um, she said, try and one. And sure enough, I, I, I did, or not and one, the uh, on one. Um, I'm talking tennis shoes, I'm back in right. basketball. Um, try the on one software and see if it'll convert things and sure enough the the raws opened and on one and so my black and white you know raws uh or my black and white jpegs turned out to be color and the raw was there so i don't know what is it's doing to convert them because i don't think they've released a uh you know a raw profile yet to on one and no one else um and i don't think on one's advertising that because no one else really has the camera to do it anyways right um, that makes me wonder if that sensor yeah. is in use in another camera, and that's what it's recognizing. It's, it, I don't yeah. know. That's so weird. I don't know. Yeah, don't it's know really works. it's something, uh, you know, I've got to do a little bit more experimentation, but I've done about five photos so far, and sure enough, it, it, it did process them, um, which is great. I wanted to see what it was like. Now, I can't say that that's going to be the best raw processor either. You know, it might True. be just by chance it's working. But all the uh, secret sauce, maybe that Olympus is going to give Lightroom or whatever. Yeah, that's, that may not be there uh, yet. Uh, I tend to believe actually that that may be true. Uh, that it, you know maybe the real raw processor will probably look a little bit better. Right. Do you know? Um, I don't use On One for uh -huh. anything. So, is the option there within On One to export those out as a DNG, or I'm sure you can shoot it out as like a 16-bit TIFF. You can um, shoot it out as a TIFF. You can shoot it out as a PSD and a okay. JPEG. Oh, there you go. So, I mean, so if you shot it out yeah. as a TIFF, yep. you've damn near got, you know, the you full raw file. It. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm excited to see what's uh, possible. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's, that's something that uh, now I want to go back and look at some of those ones I've shot where, you know, a raw file would have helped to, mm -hmm. to, yeah. to do something with it. So, uh, you know, that's for those that, that get them when they, when they do start uh, coming out. If you want to try it go for it and, right and see what you can see what you can come up with um let's talk about that uh the top selector button see if i can how close i don't know how close i can get this thing it's coming uh, in clear is it coming in clear this the c1234 mm -hmm. uh, we've talked a little bit about it um i know we didn't talk much about it when we did our video in ann arbor um i didn't talk much about it in our, the blog post um probably because i just really started getting into it <laughs> And 
and again, you know, bear with me because when, when I'm going through and when Jamie's going through, it's not like we were I handed a spec sheet back in November. Um, you know, we're just going through the camera trying to figure it out. Now we've got the spec sheets. We're trying to figure it out how to do certain things. And um, so your color wheel, your profile wheel, let's say the one on the front of the camera, um, you've obviously you've got your mono color art and uh, your CRT. So just mention what CRT is because yeah, that, not everybody knows. It's like color creator. Yep. So um, when you're in CRT, you, you still have the use of that back button, um, and it acts a lot like your color. Uh, it acts actually like your, your um, color setting number one, where you can, you know, make what you want with it. You can do all kinds of, uh, you know, filters, bring them up, down. I'm going through it right now. and So like um, kind of like doing selective color, it, right? It is like so. selective color, but um, it doesn't make everything else black and white. It just It just accentuates... It's it's almost like um, cross processing. That's almost a, a better way to say it. It's almost like a cross processing filter, um, which with a lot of control for a camera. So, again, this kind of goes to that uh, what the pen kind of plays off of, which is yep. this uh, this film oh, field. Big time. This this is actually like taking something in my view in a dark room. And, and really manipulating it because I'm going through a yellow filter right now and everything, although still color, anything that's accentuated with that yellow, like my desk happens to be like a wood desk, it's just popping. Mm -hmm. And everything else isn't, uh, didn't go black and white. Yeah. But it's got a yellow, you know, just a yellow tinge through it. So, so if you're into that, if you're in that button, this C1, 2, 3, and 4, um, and uh, we've, we've tried it on a couple of things just before we started the call. But you can program four different color selections into each one of those. So meaning on C1, you can have a C1 for each one of those things, the mono, the color, the art, and the CRT. So the front dial on the camera, you yep. set the top dial to C1. Yep. The front dial on the camera then has individual settings within it. You got it. So the top dial is C1, C2, C3, C4. C4. That yep. is 16 individual yep. customizable combinations that you can make. Exactly. And, and, they're, and, and, these, yeah. and they're not art filters. But then, you're right. Nothing's an art filter. And, right. well, except, except in the art mode, the art filter mode, you can go ahead and do that. You know sure. what I'm saying? You can right. uh, you, you can actually do that in the art filter mode. And so if you have some tweaked ones, I know I have a few tweaked ones mm -hmm. like you do that it just, yep. I just love to have. And uh, when I do that, um, you know, that that is just – and, you know, here's another thing. I'm going to tell you right now, speaking of art filters, I wanted to show this and see if I can – see if I can do it here quick. Um, start to turn this button a little bit. Uh, let's see. Oh, I know. Here. Um, all the art filters on the bottom, I don't know how close you can, can you see the bottom? Yep. Where it actually goes through the art, the ones and the twos, you know how they're all sub filters? Yes. They're not sub filters on this camera. They're actually there to select. Oh, wow. So you don't have to dig through sub menus now. You don't have to sub menu out. Now you can still sub menu out if you wanted to go and change like a color filter on the dramatic. Right. You want to make it blue or not blue, but you want to do a red. Mm -hmm. color filter on dramatic black and white and that that's a big difference i haven't seen that in the past so you bring that up and it's got you know light tone grainy film one grainy film two you know pinhole one pinhole two yeah. pinhole three so i don't know was there always a pinhole three i don't even remember if there's a pinhole three. <laughs> if not there I, is I, now. I, I don't really yeah there is one of the ones i use <laughs> but i can tell you when I'm, I'm just going through him is key, you know, key line one, key line two. I never really used that, so I didn't even know there was a second one. Right. Um, watercolor one and two, vintage. I knew vintage one, two, three, and four. Yep. And then the partial color is one, two, and three. So you can select any of those. Super cool. Yeah, it, which is nice because before you had a sub menu, sub menu around and, and all that. Now you just set them up the way you want and select them. So, so back to that C one, two, three, and four. So I've got. If you go into, let's say you're in mono, okay, I have 
remember if you're in mono profile one mono profile one is the one where you choose what you want to do with it mm -hmm. um profile two is a certain type of film profile or profile three is the infrared mm -hmm. type of film so profile one you do what you want with it i've got five or six different ones where i was taking the picture of the back of the color wheel like like that you know i was taking a picture of the color wheel a picture of the of the um, vignette i'm taking pictures with my iphone <laughs> and labeling them in my notes section to calling them photographer names so i can remember what they are you can just set them in one two three and four so you can have everything you create right there in one two three and four so if you're walking through the streets and you're going man i i like the color thing i've got set up i'm going to do four different ones right in the, near the same shot boom 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 hit it with your thumb and you're there so I guess like the easiest way to to put this um, for those familiar with you know our cameras, the Olympus cameras, these would basically be like um, color profile my sets. That's, that, so that's a real good it's way. Basically, like you just you flip to C one and crank that front dial to like your custom monotone, your custom color. You got a cross process look, what have you. Right. And at your, I mean, just literally with just two turns. You know, you've got 16 possible combinations without having to touch a menu. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Think, yeah, if in fact, if I, like I was telling Jamie before we started, that would have saved me some time. <laughs> Instead of keep looking at my iPhone going, well, I want to shoot it like this. this right. Way. I can just set it as one, two, three, and four, and, I, and I'm there. That's awesome. So, so that'll be cool. You, now, that won't pick up your settings like we talked about, like manual focus. Like it won't switch. Yeah, your button configurations speaking, don't change. Button configurations, right. It's yep. just your color selections do. And then um, one of the other things that hasn't been talked a lot about on the mono color or on the, I'm sorry, on the mono profile selector, when you're in that, you also now bring up the back and I'll hold it up. You can see the back, correct? Whoops. Uh, you can you see the green filter? Oops, just I guess you see you have one of them highlighted. I can't read what it says. Right, I'm trying to. There it is. There it is. Right there. I have it highlighted right now. Yeah, it's the green filter. It's so you've got high. Um, let's see what actually. Uh, what are the numbers on that? High, medium, low, and off. And this is the film grain effect. Now, I know in uh, some of the art filters. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, it says, oh, add green or whatever. Those are really horrible green <laughs> additions. They, they are not film green additions. No. So I, I know for a fact, and Jamie and I both have talked with one of the lead engineers on this camera, and I know for a fact how they got that. They spent, and, and this is the kind of camera, I guess that's why we're so passionate about uh, this camera, is this is the kind of stuff they did. They printed out thousands 11 by 17 printed images all all you know the same uh the same way of changing till they got the right hit on what a film grain looks like right so they they run through prints using right. we'll, we'll say I'm, i hate to name a brand or whatever mm -hmm. because i know that right you know we can't <laughs> necessarily let's okay pick a favorite black and white film from back in the day right right and they would have run off a whole series of prints that covered different tonal ranges and then right. they analyzed how the grain pattern worked from light to dark and then built that kind of emulation into the camera so like the way um whatever any of the other omds or pens work when it applies a grain it's uniform across the whole entire image. Right. it just takes grain and says boom here it is yeah where it throws with, it over it yep. with film it didn't work that way right mm -hmm. so like uh, you might have more in a in a darker area than you would in absolutely. a light area and that's what you see on this camera it's more realistic uh, like a film emulation exactly and there's a good um sample actually if you go to the get olympus site and on, on the very first thing that pops up i think it might even be nate's hands holding it <clears> um <laughs> the camera the person holding the camera on the front page, the slider page of the uh, Get Olympus site that brings up the Pen F, they've got that film grain put on that picture. It was taken with the Pen F, I'm positive, because <laughs> you can see the difference in the grains compared to something where a, someone just like overlaid, like you said, like in Photoshop, and just, you know, they put a whole thing over it. It just doesn't look the same. Right. Like that.
So, you know, the, these are these are some of the things until you start digging in the menus. And I and I know a lot of people said, hey, dig into this or dig into that. And, uh, you know, I encourage you to, if you're not listening live and you've got a question, do it. But if you're uh, going to listen after the fact, put them in the notes and, and let's see if I can uh, – Take through and find out, you know, find out what it what it really means. But uh, I think that really uh, is something. And then the the other piece, talking with that engineer, and a lot's been said about this, and that is the, you know, we'll, we'll just call it the, the sexiness of the camera. All right, <laughs> probably not going to hear a lot about that again from other cameras. But you know, the no screws anywhere. Yeah. Um, I just heard, you know, talking to the lead engineer, they said it was thousands of hours um, oh, yeah. it took to figure out how to make that happen. And even if you look at the old Pan F, there's two huge screws right on the bottom. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I know. They knew. The side and everything. They, they knew with that design setup mm -hmm. that anybody who would ever have to repair this camera would hate them forever. Probably, yep. <laughs> but it didn't matter. Design right. aesthetic is very important to Olympus. They... They want it to just as much be a a crafted piece of art, you know, mm -hmm. that you love to shoot with as well as it is a technological, you know, piece of art, which it is. So that's right. cool. And I think that that's a great way of putting it because when I know when I'm out shooting with this camera, um, you know, I always felt good about the M10 or any, any of the OMGs uh, shooting in the street. But this one just makes it like, Oh, that's a cool shot. You're just seeing things differently because of the way it feels. The little cut in right here. It's high, you'll never see this on the video, but there's just a little cut in for your finger right where you would normally put your finger right here. I mean, that that's thought. Someone that's said insane attention to detail. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's detail. And I, I watched um, who was it today? Because I've been watching other people's videos, of course, on the camera. I want to hear what they're saying. Uh, Steve Huff mm -hmm. did a, a thing. I don't know if you watched that yeah. one or not jamie but yep he, he made a good he, he made a good uh, analogy and i think that was he said that of the olympus cameras remind that remind him of apple yes making cameras he says because the detail is sick and they and they just <clears> work <throat> you know the the things that you want them to do work and then once uh they're made you just look at it and you go god how does they make that <laughs> you know yeah. how can that be so cool look at it? <laughs> So I mean, again, you know, you're talking to two pretty biased guys. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. Um, but put this in your hand, and uh, you know, when these things come out in the wild, I, I can't wait till people see them and they get this in their hand. They're going, "Oh, now I know what you're talking about." Yeah, definitely. Uh, you're not gonna lose an eye cup on any of these either with that round no. eye cup. That, yeah. that baby's not coming off. Another detail. <clears throat> thing that I know I've lost a, a couple on my own bees <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, that have come across. So yeah, that uh that that's uh that really um sums up at least a couple of my big big points uh yeah. filters and that. Um otherwise uh let's see the 20 May I know I have got questions and and I haven't done a series of actual uh, comparisons of the isos and how low you can go in low light um but uh i don't i don't know if it's groundbreaking like like if the 20 megapixel sensor is groundbreaking between the 16 from the low light capability um i think it's it's definitely deeper deeper in colors uh richer in colors and your cropping is a lot nicer yeah you get a lot more chance to crop with that 20 megapixel but I'm not, you know, I do, I did let it roll down to um, an auto ISO because I shoot a lot of street and auto ISO to 8,000, mm -hmm. um, which normally I would have only gone to 6,400. But like when we were in New York together and we were shooting in Times Square and stuff, I was doing 8,000 and they're a little grainy, but then again, that's the way they were supposed to be. 8,000 on an OMD though probably wouldn't have been as good as I wanted, but I was yeah. happy with these. Cool. Um, so yeah, so that you know that and that's just I'm just gonna say that's a uh, a user experience. I, sure. um, I don't have a lab to set it up. In. <laughs> you know, it's a user experience. So uh, I think that's that's a good thing to have. Um, let's see here. I want other things I want to talk about. Uh, the 50 megapixel. I got to get get something up on that. And then the 8,000 second is you know 
a shot for your manual shutter is crazy. <clears throat> yeah. And it was uh, on a nice sunny day. It was like that. It was in Key West. That was happening a lot, you know, running up to 8,000th of a second. Oh, yeah. Gives you the uh, the ability to shoot with all the primes wide open in the middle yep. of the day. You know, and if an 8,000th of a second isn't fast enough, you can always flip <laughs> it over to electronic shutter mode. Yeah. And what what is the shutter speed cap out there? Is it 16,000, 16, right? 16,000th so, of a second. I mean, you can pretty much damn near shoot at the sun. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, and, and not think so. over highlight things. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, other, other than that, I haven't tried out the grip yet. Um, you know, I definitely want to get one of those and, and see what that does for it because I do like – the grip from the perspective it looks like it has the uh, arca swiss on the bottom right built into the bottom of the grip which is great because uh i'm definitely i did use this camera and i'm definitely going to continue to use this camera for um live composite mm -hmm. and uh you know so having that for that and of course the high red shots you're going to need to have it on a tripod anyways yeah yep you know so you you'll definitely want that <clears throat> But uh, I've got a lot of a lot of images to share and and stuff. We could even, if you want to go through a few of them, we could pull up. Oh yeah, could, totally. Yeah, I could do a I could do a few here. Actually, I probably should have put this in a little bit better. But um, and right now you're you're not looking at it, so bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should have had them set up in preview. But uh, we can uh, we can look at them here now. I can go in and share them. Let's see if, okay, here. And how about now? That yep. came up. Baby Hulk. I remember yeah, Baby that. Hulk in, in New York City. Uh, and you can see that fence post along the side. Now, these are all in the, the color option one. Again, these are my settings. This is stuff, stuff that I have set, you know, whether it be night, day, or, or you know, something like that where I wanted to accentuate things. Um, I had five or six different ones of these that I put in, uh, you know, here's a good night one with a, you know, a rainy night that, that we had there in New York and just the umbrella and the, the look of running behind somebody. But the, the colors, this one, it was just really cool. Again, I'll tell you right here, this is one from the hip um, positive coming, coming through Times Square, uh, you know, cause that was just a quick w one second grab. I had one chance that guy lifted her and, and, put her down all within the same second. Um, so, you know, shooting at, uh, what was it? At, F, you know, it's a 1 60th, of, a 1 1 60th of a second. Um, just, you know, easy times. And then this is at the Metro airport in Detroit. Um, just sitting in the, you know, down on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> People are watching, wondering, why is this guy sitting on the floor? Um, but it, this crazy light show plays in this, whatever it is. What do you think that is, Jamie? A quarter mile, eighth of a mile? It's a long tunnel, and the music oh, is creepy sometimes. Yeah, creepy, weird music <laughs> cool. playing through there. But it's really cool, and, and if you can get one guy like this guy here sitting, it was, it was pretty good. There's another one uh, with a different setting. I threw it, and I was able to switch over to a different setting, come up with a different color situation uh, in Wicker Park in New York. Uh, you know, just watching some people look at uh, look donuts and just, just, you know, you can see some of the uh, the deepness, I think, of the shots compared to what I would have before the, the detail. It's hard to probably get it to blow up enough, but the, the detail down in, uh, down in uh, you know, in the bricks there of that one uh, was really cool. Uh, same thing here yeah, on my screen. I realize, you know, we probably, like you said, with Jamie, we probably got to say, "Hey, this is <laughs> looking through a computer through internet." But the detail in, you know, in each of the little uh, uh, branches here is amazing. Uh, on, on this one, same thing here. The sewer, you know, city Detroit sewer with, with people coming through. Another fun one, you know, on a people mover. Um, at some crazy convention. I've got a lot of these crazy convention ones that I haven't released yet because the people are so dressed up. It was a lot of fun. Uh, some of the famous graffiti in the, one of the alleys in Detroit. Um, just, you know, getting down low and you can see <coughs> the detail in the bottom. So, yeah, that uh, th this one, uh, pretty pretty nice. Now, it's still, still screen sharing, right? Can you mm -hmm. still, let's, let's see if this is... Um, Let's see here. 
this is all color profile too. So now you'll start seeing a little bit deeper, vivid uh, colors popping out. Again, another one, everybody's fast moving. Here's one from the hip as I walk past this guy uh, on the subway in New York. Um, so real simple, but, but you know, pull up the clarity. Here's one from our video in, in Ann Arbor um, at the end of our video. Again, this is color profile too, so it's got some real vivid colors, uh, you know, in it. Um, let's see here. Oops, sorry. There we go. There's a sharp one. But the clarity inside the bean here in Chicago and the light, you know, popping off. What did I have this at? One twentieth of a second. I'm uh, just seeing 16. it's kind of stuck on one photo right now. Oh, it's, is it really? It's wow. the uh, the alley in Detroit, the big is Asian it really? mural. Yeah. Oh, jeez. It's you know what? Then I gotta get. What if I shut that? How about now? I see you. Oh, just me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I want to show it. Let me go into mono then. The mono two is really cool. Those are like some of my favorite ones um, because they're pretty. They they can be pretty heavy handed a little bit at the same time, but they really have a film look to them. And all right, so hold on. I'm going to go over here and see if I can start the screen share. There it is. All right. Now, do you got the yep. tower from Chicago? Mm -hmm. This is one of those ones where you can see that grain come out. This is like a either medium or a heavy grain, but the difference on the grain in the darker areas, and again, it might be hard to see in your, you know, uh, on your computer, but on mine, it's amazingly different than a grain you would just select, you know, when it says add grain. Same thing here. You've got such deep, deep colors. Uh, you know, I just love, love the look of, you know, here with the hair. you got these guys working on the roof and, the, you know, the L coming by, especially this one, um, you know, where it picks up and, and makes everything uh, just a dark old film look you know, on the subway there. Um, this one was just, was great. Cause I was headed out at F 16. I saw that sun blaring down <laughs> and it, timing was perfect walking through, um, you know, to come down on, on Marley there and Martin Luther King. That's really cool. Somewhat of the same thing right around the corner at the same time, another person walking in. Here's one with a blue. That's something we haven't necessarily talked about in the monotone. I'm going to pull it up here while I talk. Um, you can also choose when you're in there a uh, the a monochrome color. Like most of the time, I had it on neutral, but you also you have a sepia, a blue, a purple, and a green actually tint or tinge to the picture. This has got that blue or you know a purple tint to that picture, making it uh, a real different with the silhouettes in there in Wicker Park. And let's see. Um, one more here again this is that film grain to me it's you know i will get these pictures out to be able to look at them i know jamie and i talked about that before so you actually can look at them on your computer and not through google hangouts because i think that degrades with the internet um so you can see some of this film grain in here you know the difference that it that it looks like but yeah so these are uh these are absolutely amazing. I don't know why. Here we go. There I am. I'm back now. Yep. All right. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I won't go through all of them, but I'm going to start building some galleries of these images. If you go to the blog post that accompanies our video, um, and I know Jamie will put that in this show's link too, mm -hmm. um, but the blog post has 25 or so now um, pictures, but I've got obviously hundreds of more. That I want to show uh, so you can get good examples of, of what it is and, and even some from this past week um, you know I was in the Wynwood district area of Miami and with all the graffiti and that was fantastic uh, to take pictures there too so um, I will say this as much as everyone talks about the mono and believe me I was a black and white shooter when it comes to street um, I counted up my pictures after this whole project I took way more color than I did really? black and awesome. white. I have, I somehow I have, uh, I, it's the settings. It, yeah. It's, just plain, it's those settings. It's the ability to adjust those settings has made the pictures look like, a, you know, an old color uh, film. 
Yeah, so that's it, sweet. <laughs> yeah, I, I really, I really think it. Uh, it makes it can really change your creativity and, and that's what you know when you hear it it's not a bunch of bs hype you know or ad marketing hype your creativity changes when you're looking at things a different way oh yeah definitely yeah. without a doubt it's funny you know um i'm i don't even have the camera yet right and i've already got this whole mindset going um i was telling somebody sure. earlier today actually i've got um 18 reasons for this camera to be in my hands and I could hold them up one at a time. And they're all what I would call prime reasons to right. get that camera. And the last two that I will hold up yeah. are ones that Olympus doesn't make, but they lead into another um, reason to talk about a feature in that camera that we haven't addressed yet. And I don't know if I've heard anybody address it yet or not. Yeah. So I like to shoot with these Voigtlander lenses right? at the 42 and a half and the 25 and on that shelf behind me there i hate it doing everything backwards in the camera i've got yeah. some vintage lenses right there now what you can do with the pen f is i can actually in the camera make a profile for that lens so that when i put on the voigtlander 42.5 millimeter lens i can select that in my like this little lens profile that i create Yep. And I can plug in now, mind you, this is a all manual focus lens. There's no electronic contacts. So I don't have really any lens metadata to go with my images, but I can create a lens profile so that if I do shoot an image with uh, that Voigtlander lens, with that profile selected embedded in the metadata for the picture, it will now show at least the lens that I used. And right. Mike is showing it now can I'll stop talking. That? Yeah. Just so you know, that that's yeah. That's true too. That's going to go over. But can you see it? Is it cl clear enough? Yep, sure Wait. can. It says Olympus. There's the nine millimeter body cap, right? Yep, yep. I got set up in there the nine millimeter body cap and also the fifteen millimeter body cap. Yep. Uh, lens. I don't have any Voigtlander lenses. Probably should put one in there. Maybe Jamie will let me use one if yes. I say, "Yeah, I got a spot for it." <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so you know, and for me, like I said, I, there's been numerous times where I've shot images and thought, you know man, it'd be cool to not have to key in mm -hmm. information about this. I could just pull it up somehow in the camera. Well, I didn't even mention that at the summit or as an idea. And right. It's like they're always thinking ahead of stuff. So, And I think yeah, that goes to show you, like, you know, that they know that this camera is going to be used by, you know, I think really creative types, you know, not just right. the, uh, the hardcore, you know, digital photographer, but just people who are into – being creative and right. one of those ways of doing that i think is by throwing on old glass because it's fun well and i think is somebody who may have been a film shooter for sure and has all those lenses sitting around the old olympus om lenses yeah, yeah without a doubt and, and they're gonna put them on and they can now we can list as many as you want mm -hmm. in there. and you just choose when you go to shoot click the button a little check mark comes up and then it puts that right into your metadata when you load it into Lightroom. You you actually see the lens. Yeah, that's there. so cool. But it won't have, ever, you know, it doesn't have like your aperture or nothing. Yeah, but still, no. right? But you know, but, you can at least sort your catalog, even yeah. by those lenses that would not contain metadata, like your body cap lenses and third-party right. lenses. You know, that are non-electronic. So yeah, I can, cool I can imagine. Not that we have any inside information, but. <clears> I can, and that might show up on another camera someday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I would I, hope. Yeah, it just seems like something that would would, would really uh, be a good idea. Yep. You know, to have. If it doesn't, I'm sure we'll bring it up at the next. <laughs> thing <laughs> yeah. To say, hey, why don't you guys do this? Yep. Um, so so yeah, hey, that's it. That's kind of it. But yeah. I'm yeah. going to totally change the topic and make this a 100% non-pen topic. Yep. But I'm wearing my out of Chicago shirt tonight. Right. Because I wanted to mention that, um, you know, it's coming up fast. It, it'll June will be here before you know it. And please, mm -hmm. Lord, let it come soon because I'm sick of this crappy winter. <laughs> but um, Mike and I, it looks like we're talking about adding another workshop mm -hmm. onto our schedule, like on Friday. I know um, we've got one Thursday night that's going to just be killer. Actually, Thursday into night. Right. Um, but I think we're going to look at putting one on Friday. There's been a lot of interest in what Mike and I do, and we've been asked to come up with a uh, another workshop idea. So I'm thinking that we're looking at doing something along the lines of 
uh, something for Olympus users. I know last mm -hmm. year we tried to really quickly, I mean, literally like spur yeah. of the moment, put together one an hour. Uh, for, yeah. yeah, we had like an hour to put together a class, which, you yeah. know, I think we did all right for no time yeah. at all to prepare. But, <laughs> um, so in sticking with, uh, supporting our Olympus, uh, user base and fan base, uh, doing a class where it's basically, we're going to pick maybe like 10 features of the Olympus cameras somewhere in that area, maybe eight to 10, mm -hmm. um, Mike and I'll each kind of back and forth between each one of the features, you know, like he'll do four, I'll do four or five, whatever. And uh, we'll go over those features, why we like them, how we use them. We'll get everybody in the classroom familiar with how to apply those features and in what instances they might like to use those features. Right. And then we'll head out into the streets. Like I'm hoping Mike says, Jamie, let's go to Wicker Park because yeah. the area of Chicago is just so rad. Yeah. Um, and then we'll put all those features into use with our class. So if it sounds like something you're interested in, just ping Mike or I, you know, let us know, give us a little bit of feedback on it. And I think yeah, that's what we want to do. Right. Yeah. 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 To design the class. Yeah. So yeah. Cool this, to get some input before I right. do the class. Yeah. The class um, doesn't exist right now. So it's pivotal for uh, a little bit right. of feedback. Right. And you know what? That's, it's a great segue because I did have a couple other notes that are totally non of my well as well. And that is so tomorrow night or no i'm sorry wednesday night the uh, the uh the uh same bat to station bat channel mirrorless minutes will be back your regularly um, scheduled broadcast right your regularly scheduled broadcast and it is it is out of chicago night um we have chris smith the founder of out of chicago on to talk all about out of chicago so this week is all about pen f and out of chicago Yep. Uh, I, I won't be wearing my shirt Wednesday night. Sorry, Chris. I wore yeah, it today. I'll try to bad plan. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so tune in for that. Um, we've, we've added, I added something real quick. I've got to travel next week for work into Phoenix. Um, so any, if there's anybody listening from Phoenix or you're in Phoenix next week, um, I'm going to do a meetup. We're going to do a photo walk uh, from seven to nine with Alex McClure, a Super trailblazer. Cool. Yeah, just get together downtown Phoenix. In fact, I'm always going, when you go to Phoenix, I'm always looking for the mountains or sun, you know, or, or a sunset or something like that. And those are all great things. I could probably do that forever too, but it'd be great to get in the city. I really never get into the city of Phoenix. Um, so I'm excited to get in there. And Alex, of course, uh, knows everything. He lives in that area. Um, but we've already got like six or eight people. It's, you know, it's on meetup. It's free. Come out, shoot. Um, I will have the F with me <laughs> and, uh, Alex happens to be one of the very few that has a 300 millimeter lens yeah. with him. Uh, so you could see a couple, you know, the most recently released products <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely from, like from Olympus way um, before you can see them anywhere else. Right. And I don't, uh, I mean, I don't think it's enough to buy a plane ticket to come in, but if you're in Phoenix, you know, come check it out, uh, and, uh, see, and, uh, that talks about like our meetup group, our, our mirrorless adventures. Uh, I know we're up over a hundred people already. I'd say join it if you're not in uh, Detroit or Michigan. Still join the group because we're putting things on there that aren't going to be there a lot like this. Or if Jamie's somewhere, he might hey say I've got a few hours, I can do a photo walk. Why not? Yep. Um, that's the kind of stuff we're we're looking at doing. So join that. Uh, let's see, and that's probably. That's probably it. We'll talk more, I'm sure, on Wednesday about some of our other things, <laughs> especially Chicago. Yeah, definitely. All right. But, well, cool. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on with the camera tonight, Mike. It was a good idea to to put this show together. I'm glad you uh, asked me if we wanted to do one. Yeah, I'm gonna jump at the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just real excited uh, for every. I'm more excited now for like you and everyone else to get one in their hands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I can start seeing what what else it can do. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, you know, keep talking, keep, keep the questions coming on, on the YouTube channel or whatever. And, you know, if you like this a little bit, uh, I think we always say we're just two guys that are passionate about photography. Um, it's not going to be the slickest show on earth, but it's going to be very down to earth. True. It's real. Uh, tell you that it's real. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, authentic. Keeping it real from Detroit. Um, <laughs> that's me. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, man. <laughs> all right. You guys take care and we'll all see right. you on Wednesday night uh, again with Chris Smith from out of Chicago. Sounds good. See ya. All right. Take care.